So this is part two of our discussion of the trace determinant plane. Picking up where we left off, uh, I had already uh, described how we can characterize uh, parts of the plane by simply asking the question, when is t squared minus 4d uh, equal to zero, bigger than zero, or less than zero? The equal to zero one puts us exactly on this curve, the parabola in the td plane. Um, <clears throat> uh, this, let's actually write it, this is the curve that says that d is equal to t squared over 4. And uh, when we're above it, when uh, d is bigger than t squared over 4, we're in this situation. We've already said that uh, we get to the situation when the argument of the square root sign is negative, when t squared minus 4d is negative, and we can make two other classifications now. Um, so everything above has complex eigenvalues. However, the distinction between spiral sinks and spiral sources uh, has to do with the real part. Well, when t is negative, uh, the real part, t over 2, let's write that, lambda is equal to uh, t over 2 uh, plus or minus uh, square root, if I switch it around, that's 4d minus t squared, that's a positive number, we put an i out front, right? So, <clears throat> Our, uh, our real part is t over 2, and so when t is negative, we have a negative real part, in which case, it's not so easy to see in this picture, but our, um, with a negative real part, we are spiraling in towards the origin, and so our arrows are taking us in. When, um, when t is positive, when we're on this side, the t over 2 term would be positive, and we're looking at situations where we have um, um, a spiral solution, of course, uh, but we're spiraling away from the origin. So I'll put my little arrows showing that we're, that we're leaving the origin. And, uh, and finally, uh, in the case where t equals 0, uh, we are exactly... Um, when t equals 0, we're on the d-axis, uh, and so these are our situations where we have our, our centers, which could be a circle or an ellipse, but our picture is showing uh, circles, and again, the orientation of all of these uh, can't be determined until we actually uh, know the matrix and plug in one point and determine whether it's clockwise or counterclockwise. But that's what the trace determinant plane allows us to understand about complex eigenvalues. If I am, again, in this region, to the left of the d-axis, but above the curve that d is equal to t squared over 4, I am, anything in here is going to be a spiral uh, sink. Anything on this side will be a spiral source, and anything that lives along this axis is a center. Next, we want to consider the case of repeated eigenvalues, which is when we live along this curve, when t squared minus 4d equals 0. Well, if t squared minus 4d equals 0, our eigenvalue um, only has a single number because the radical term falls away, and we're just looking at t over 2. So clearly on the left-hand side, where t is negative, Anywhere along this portion, uh, the lambda will be less than zero, because t is less than zero. And on this side, the lambda will be bigger than zero, because t is bigger than zero. In figure 3.48 in your book, I've copied it. It's hard to see the arrows. I'm going to reinforce what they look like. But on this side, um, yes, we have a straight line solution, and the arrows are pointing in. And similarly, as we curve towards our origin, this is very sloppy, but 
our arrows are moving in. <laughs> and uh, I'll make a better picture of this uh, later. And on this side, again, we have our straight line solution, and we've got our curves coming in, and our arrows are pointing out, because in this case, this is a source, we're spiraling out, or we're moving out on this straight line, because, again, the lambda value, the eigenvalue, is given by t over 2, the trace value over 2, and all along this curve, the trace value is positive. Next, I consider the case of um, distinct real eigenvalues. And I have to break this up into a discussion. So the distinct real eigenvalues happen when we're below this curve, so all through here. These are our distinct real eigenvalues. But I want to break the discussion up into a discussion what's happening when t is positive first and then when t is negative. So we're going to assume that we're working on the right-hand side of the plane. And we already know that t squared minus 4d is positive. That's what's placed us below this curve. We're in this region when t squared minus 4d is positive. Well, there's two distinct real eigenvalues. One of them is definitely positive because t is positive. We're on the right-hand side. And we're adding the square root of something that's positive. And so one of the eigenvalues is positive for sure, and that's true independent of if we're up above here or down below here. For any value, as we move along the d-axis, uh, it's true for all d. But the second eigenvalue um, will be positive in one situation and negative in another, because if we put ourselves up in this region where d is positive, so here's my d-axis, D is positive through here, so anything in this region has a positive value of D. If D is positive, T squared minus 4D is, we know it, it is positive. We've already, we know we don't have a complex when we know it's not too big, but it's, uh, it's a positive number. But T squared minus 4D is a positive number. It's something smaller than t squared because we're subtracting um, <clears throat> uh, something from t squared, and so we have something smaller. The square root of this will be smaller than t. So this result, t minus the square root of t squared minus 4d when d is positive, will be a second positive eigenvalue. So when we're in this region, I'm going to put it in red, we're below that line when we're in here. We have two positive um, eigenvalues. Lambda 1, we already knew it would be positive. But lambda 2, I've just shown you, would be positive. And that's why anything in this region would be drawn as a source. And so you'll see as we leave the origin, we have arrows moving away. So anything in this red region is a source. The second situation, again, lambda 1 we know to be positive if t is bigger than 0. However, if we're below the axis, and so I'll, I'll indicate this region in green, so if we're down here, then um, I would argue that since d is negative, d is negative in this region, so minus 4d is something positive, t squared plus something positive is bigger than t squared, the square root will be bigger than t, and t minus something larger than t will be a negative number. And so I argue in this region we've got two um, different signed eigenvalues. In this region we have a a lambda 1 that is um, positive, but a lambda 2 that is negative. In fact, we have a saddle. Okay. This picture, um, as we'll see, anywhere below the uh, t-axis is going to be a saddle, but certainly in quadrant, certainly here in quadrant 4, we have a saddle. Okay, so what's going on on the left-hand side when the t 
is negative. So we're going to consider the situation t is negative, t squared minus 4d is positive, meaning we're below this curve. We're anywhere down here. We're in quadrant 3, in a portion of quadrant 3, or in quadrant, I'm sorry, quadrant 2, portion of quadrant 2, or in quadrant 3. Of the two eigenvalues, one of them definitely has to be negative since t is negative. We've already said we're on this side of the plane. And we're subtracting the square root of something, and we know t squared minus 4d is positive. So this, we're subtracting something from a negative number, uh, lambda 1. Uh, lambda 1 has to be a negative number. However, lambda 2 um, depends on whether we're up here where d is uh, positive or where um, we are in the region where d is negative. And I think I've written this backwards. One second. Yes, I, I'm sorry, I made a small mistake. So <clears throat> when we're in the region where d is um, bigger than 0, t is negative, d is positive, that's this region. If d is positive, um, then uh, t squared minus 4d is a number that is smaller uh, than t squared. We're subtracting something from t squared, so it's smaller than t squared. And we take the square root of it, we get a number that's smaller than t. The square root of something smaller than t squared will be a number smaller than t. So we're adding something positive to t, but something smaller than t. t is a negative number, so adding something smaller than uh, t to this negative number keeps our answer, and I just have to, I apologize, cross this out. I don't have an eraser at this point. Um, <clears throat> if d is positive, this is negative. Our second eigenvalue is negative. And so um, I'm out of colors, but I'm going to again indicate with red that we're on this side now. So for t values in this region, below the blue curve, we have two negative eigenvalues. Uh, lambda 1 is negative, and lambda 2, when d is positive, is negative. And so the picture that is drawn for us is a sink because our curves all have two negative eigenvalues, and so everything will approach the origin. In this region, just as I did on the other side, in quadrant 3, our second eigenvalue uh, would correspond to the value of d being down here, d is negative. Well, if d is negative, minus 4d is positive. t squared plus something is bigger than t squared. The square root of it will be bigger than t. This is a positive number bigger than t. This t is a negative value. The resultant will be, uh, again, I'm sorry, I've got to cross this out. The resultant will be positive. So in this region, we have a lambda 1 that is negative and a lambda 2 that is positive. And again, that is a saddle. And uh, so everything below the t-axis uh, is a saddle. And so we've begun. I have one more uh, step to go, but I'll do that in a separate uh, slide. Um, but our major categories have been classified. We know that if we have a trace and determinant value that puts us in this region here, we're going to be a spiral sink. In this region here, we're going to be a spiral source. If we live on the positive d-axis, we know we're going to be a, a center. If we live um, in quadrant 2, but outside of um, our parabola, we know we're going to be, in this region, a sink. In this region, we're going to be a source. And anything below the axis, including uh, d equals 0, which we'll have to talk about, 
um, including t is equal to zero, um, will again be uh, a saddle. And I'll address those cases in, a, in another slide. Thank you.